On today's high watt soundbite, we're taking a look at one of the most powerful tools in your studio, the mighty compressor. If I was forced to spend the rest of my career mixing on an island and I could only bring with me all of my equalizers or all of my compressors, in other words, if I was forced to abandon one of those two categories of processors, there's no question in my mind I would abandon equalization and I would take compressors to that island. Absolutely no question. Now, of course, they're both critical tools to a recording engineer. It's just that a compressor, and particularly the different types of compressors, can have a really huge impact on the character and tone of any given sound. Whereas that equalizer, of course, has the ability to affect tonal change. But yeah, you're probably not going to have an equalizer sound like a compressor anytime soon. Now, I have a couple of hardware compressors that I go to regularly. For today's session, I'm going to stick strictly inside the box. And particularly, we're talking about Universal Audio plugins today. Why? Oh man, Universal Audio has just done such a good job at modeling these old devices. A lot of these units I've actually physically used for a big chunk of my career. So when Universal Audio really started getting into modeling at the component level, the way they're doing it nowadays, oh man, yeah, what a game changer to the world of plugins. For instance, from Universal Audio, if I insert a Neve 1073 on any given channel, like a vocal for instance, Without even engaging the equalizer, that preamp changes the tonal quality of the sound of that track, just like the original hardware did. You know, they go in and model everything about that piece of gear, including how it sounds when it's sitting idle. A lot of these old compressors have the ability to bypass the compressor circuit and just use the electronics to help bring character to the sound. So for today's session, I wanna share the four basic types of compressors and hear just how big an effect they have on any given source sound. So the four types of compressors we're talking about today, FET, VCA, optical, and variable gain or tube ultimately. Okay, so for reference, I'm gonna play a one bar drum loop and I'm gonna start with no compression and then we'll switch through the four different types. Check it. Okay, so for my example of an FET compressor, I'm using probably the most famous of all time, a Yuri 1176, and probably my favorite compressor of all time. There's something awesome about the way a field effect transistor or FET compressor works. The FET compressor is one of the ones that probably adds the most character to any given sound. And this is one of the reasons that I absolutely am attracted to the 1176. It's just been my go-to compressor. Now, what makes it so unique is just how ultra fast it is at the attack and release. When you've got the attack setting on an 1176 to the slowest setting, that's still faster than the fastest setting on an optical compressor. So one of the main characteristics of an FET compressor is that speed in which it can engage the compressor circuit and disengage it. The speed of how fast that switching happens can create a lot of artifacts in the sound. And so many times it's those artifacts that I'm attracted to, as in the case with this drum sound. Here it is flat. And now crushed. So FET compressors are generally known to add quite a bit of character to any given sound. And that amount of character can be radical. You can really create a lot of cool artifacts with the speed of how fast that compressor can engage and disengage. Now, similarly, a VCA compressor can also have very fast attack and release times. And it's become a very popular compressor mainly for the fact that it gives us users so much control. You know, a VCA compressor has a very sort of predictable outcome, very much a linear set of controls where a lot of these other compressors are the exact opposite. There's nothing linear about it. Let's have a quick listen.
pretty awesomely aggressive sound. And one of the reasons probably the DBX 160 is just sort of an epic compressor on drums. The attack and release times are fixed and they're fairly fast. So, you know, it's adding a lot of artifacts to the sound, obviously. Now, another very popular type of compression is optical. And in this particular case, I'm using probably the greatest example of an optical compressor ever made, the Teletronics LA-2A. So up until now, with both the FET and the VCA compressor, both of those units are using either discrete electronics or some kind of transistor to create that compression effect. Well, in the case of optical, it's this amazing technology where the input signal is converted to a light source. And then there's a bunch of light sensitive resistors that read that light. And that's what controls the compression effect. Yeah, there's something about the way that that interaction happens, that light lighting up and then those, those resistors reading that light. There's just a particular thing about that process that create a very sort of non-linear response and a sort of non-predictable response. The one beautiful thing about an optical compressor is that usually you can hit it really hard and it doesn't create a lot of those crazy artifacts like, like an FET or a VCA compressor will. It's a really popular choice to a lot of engineers because you can be quite heavy handed with that compression without introducing a whole lot of other artifacts. So let's have a listen to that one really quick. No comp. Notice with that optical compressor over the other two that we just tried, much more kind of dynamic range is allowed to pass through that compressor. The other two compressors were really kind of choking that dynamic range, tonally changing the sound a lot. The beauty of optical compression is that it is generally a more transparent effect. It might be a better example for me to go back and forth between this optical compressor and the VCA, just because they, they have a radically different sound. Yeah, a lot of people refer to optical compression as very musical sounding. And that's part of the reason why is that crazy interaction that happens between that, that light and the resistors that read that light. There's just something about all the internal delay and, and sort of lag time that all of that creates somehow makes a very magical and musical sounding compressor. And of course, the final and fourth compressor type we're gonna talk about is variable gain. In this case, it's manly variable mu. Mu is essentially gain in terms of tube talk. So this Manly compressor and, and any tube compressor is using an actual tube for the compression circuit. And the way that that tube responds and creates compression is directly related to what the incoming signal is. Now, typically a, a variable gain or tube compressor is gonna add a ton of character to the sound you're compressing. Whether you're actually compressing that sound or not, just running through the electronics of a tube compressor, very often you've got tubes on the input stage, the output stage, all of those tubes and transformers are adding a definite color to the sound. So very often as an engineer, I choose a tube compressor if I really am after a certain kind of harmonic distortion. Yeah, there's sort of a magic in a, in a valve compressor that it has the ability to, to really change the character of the sound and yet still be quite transparent. Really quite a special sound. Let's have a listen. Really, it's almost more of a tonal change than it is any kind of big compression effect. Again, if I'm going for a really aggressive, compressed room sound, it's not gonna be a tube compressor that I typically go for. I'm gonna really rely on my FET compressor, no question. That speed of the attack and release times, that is what creates that crushing kind of drum sound. Let's have a quick reference between this valve compressor and that FET compressor, check it.
yeah, definitely more aggressive with that 1176. Okay, so let's switch up our source sound. I've got an acoustic guitar that I recorded. Here it is absolutely flat with no compression. And then we'll have a listen to this exact same riff going through the four different types of compression. Let's check it. Yeah, definitely a more subtle change between these different compressors, but no question, each one of them has a distinct and, and, and unique sound. Let's do a quick comparison between the Manly valve compressor that I have set up and the DBX160, which is a VCA, radically different tones. Check it. Now in both examples, the guitar is being quite heavily compressed, but notice that in the VCA, we can hear that compression loud and clear through those artifacts that it's adding. Whereas the Manly Variable Mu, absolutely transparent, really amazing. And this acoustic guitar really sort of verifies that idea that an optical compressor is a very musical sounding compressor. I mean, listen to the beauty tone of this guitar going through that optical. And there's a lot of compression going on here. very musical sounding when I compare it to the VCA version. Yeah, much more aggressive sounding compression when I switch back to that optical, becomes much more transparent, even though it's still quite heavy. So I encourage you to try your own experiments, you know, become familiar with the four basic types of compression and familiarize yourself with the character and qualities that each one can introduce to your mix.